But once I start to get the things I want, I can calm down a bit. Let's start this off with LB, a larger fellow from Lexington, South Carolina. When LB wants to get sodas and snack cakes and potato chips, it makes me feel awful. What am I supposed to do? Tell him no. To me, that's the only thing left that he has. Good Lord, how much soda was that? Like so, so much soda. And to answer your question, yes, you're supposed to tell him no. Will you grab a thing of the pepperoni pizza pockets? Is that what you want? You don't have to turn around and be a smart ass about it like that. The car has gotten quite a bit bigger since the last time we've seen it. French fries, chips, and those pepperoni pizza bites, just to name a few. Can't wait to see what the actual meal is going to be with all this food. This shouldn't be my life, and this shouldn't be her life. And if I could go back in time and change the things that happened that led me here, I would do it in a heartbeat. Whoa, looks like I spoke too soon. We might be home from the supermarket, but you gotta love double fisting it before dinner. I just wish she'd give me some space at times and let up because sometimes I just want to seclude myself. LB, you want something to eat? Yeah, just give me two hot dogs and two hamburgers. The family's having a cookout and that is a big order for a first plate. Thank you. When I'm in a real dark place where I turn to food for kind of that safe, comforted feeling. It's not uncommon for me to eat the portions of two or three grown men. Looks like the order got a little bigger. I could see the hot dogs and burgers, but it looks like he got some beans and pasta salad in there too. I'll keep eating or drinking until I get that like full feeling. He ain't kidding. LB is downing a lot of food and showing no signs of slowing down. I never thought enabling LB would lead to what it is now. I feel like he's not gonna live long. And for good measure, there's another plate. Sure, why not? I'm so big now, I can't work. Ashley has to provide for our family. I don't wanna break up our family, but we can't go on like this. I know what you're thinking. Why is Doug here again? We already talked about his meal in a previous episode. Well, that's because we talked about his public meals, but we haven't discussed the ones he hides from his wife. Are you hungry? Yeah. What do you want? Um, pizza. I want pizza. Of course y'all do. About the only thing I'm good for is getting food for the family. Remember when he went to go pick up that pizza for his family? It's hard to go out, but I know it's my chance to sneak an extra meal. All my family knows about is the meal I'm bringing home. They don't know about how many other meals I can eat before I get back. Well, as it turns out, before he came home, Doug snuck over to the fast food burger joint for a quick meal before his actual meal. Yeah, I need to get a uh, number four. A lot of burger places have the small burgers for like a dollar. I'll grab an extra one of those and eat it on the way home. He claims to order a small burger, but we clearly hear him order a number four, which implies fries at the very least. It kind of feels like I'm doing something I'm not supposed to do, and it's kind of adds to the whole enjoyment of it. I'll have this wrapper in my pocket so I can throw it away in the house when I go in. Doug is very aware he shouldn't do this, but the added naughtiness to his actions only add to the enjoyment. Doug absolutely is a closet eater. I can't prove it, but I know he eats food when I'm not around. That's why I think it's so dangerous where he's at is that I can't stop that. Even though Ashley can't prove it, she has her suspicions about Doug, and that's why she's given up fighting him on portion sizes altogether. Hi. Hey, Shun. <laughs> so we got your stuff. Yes. Sienna needs a caretaker, and Derekus comes over to bring her some food. Did you eat? No. Can you get me some burritos? Okay. And hash rods? Okay. How many do you want? Um, four. Okay. Four burritos and... Four burritos and what? Six hash browns. Look, I'm not a certified caretaker or anything, but I assume the job involves, well, taking care of her. Giving her four burritos and six hash browns is the worst thing you can do for her. Nobody needs that much food to start the day. How can I help? Um, can I please have a large stuffed crust pepperoni pizza? Um, the cinnamon bites thing, and that's all. Thank you. The editing makes it seem like this call happens not long after he leaves, and the sunlight in the shaded windowsill helps us draw a similar conclusion. I can't imagine a world where anyone would need a large pizza after downing all that breakfast. And she kind of almost lost it. It broke my heart to see my mom that upset. It was just awful. 
I didn't know what to do and I just wanted to eat, but I couldn't while I was in the hospital. So I didn't gain much for a bit. The pizza is here and she is not slowing down at all. That large pizza and cinnamon bites are completely gone before long. So things got really bad and I just shut off. It was in this downward spiral until my mom came and got me. And of course, you can't have cinnamon bites without cinnamon rolls to follow. Now, I stop through the fast food probably about five to six times a week. James is a man that likes some fast food. I would like to get a foot long uh, quarter pound coney with uh, cheddar peppers, please. After I get off work, fast food is the easiest thing. Getting that almost every day after work can't be good for you. Just look at how big that foot long is. That way you ain't gotta go home and cook nothing and uh, just crawl in bed or sit down and watch TV. Give me another bite before his light changes. Doing this once in a blue moon, I get it. Everyone gets hungry. But doing this four or more times a week, that's a serious problem. Sometimes when I'm cooking something, he will have already gone through the drive-thru and I say something, well, I already had something to eat. Well, why did you eat this? Well, you cooked it. That sub would be enough to feed me for a day, but James isn't done. I remember about four or five years ago, I went to the doctor. They brought these big scales in. My first thought was, he was 750 pounds. That is a whole lot of food James is downing, especially when you consider that he ate before he got home. Here you are putting this pie on here knowing I ain't supposed to eat it. I guess James blames me for his weight. I hope he's not too bitter at me. What really gets me riled up is that he blames his mother for cooking all this and even lashes out on her a bit. Even though my life was miserable, getting excitement when I know it's time to eat again. What are we eating? There's only one thing that keeps Sayrita going day in and day out, and it's the same thing that's slowly killing her, food. You ready for breakfast? I am. What you need me to get? I wanna do bacon, egg and cheese sandwiches with some pizza rolls. Okay. Bacon, egg, and cheese sandwiches are not the healthiest choice in the world, but at least it's breakfast food. Pizza rolls, on the other hand, yeah, not so much. Do I want war or do I want peace? If I give in, I'll have peace. If I don't, it'll be a constant nagging about it. Well, apparently they've set up shop in Sayrita's bedroom, and we can see that these sandwiches are going to be heavy on the bacon. I mean, just look at that pan. It's layered with uncooked bacon. Food fulfills me. It fulfills empty voids that, that humans can't fulfill. It's like a kid in a candy store. When you go in the candy store and your eyes light up because you got a multitude of stuff and you got all type of different variety of stuff. It's the same thing when it comes to looking at my refrigerator like, oh, I'm eating out of every one of those snacks. Making five sandwiches for two people is probably too much, but we see that Sirita is getting four of them while her fiance only gets the one. Keep in mind, that's not even counting the pizza rolls. We could see them there on the bed and something tells me Sirita is going to eat a pretty large share of those. After waddling into the store and sitting down on the cart, the very first words out of Sirita's mouth is snacks. I've got a bad feeling about this one. How about these right here? Oh yes, mini barbecue. I actually like those. I want some cheese balls. I like cheese balls. And just look at that cart. That thing is stacked to the brim and, as far as I can tell, appears to be almost exclusively loaded with snacks and junk food. I hit these points where I will indulge in something and my stomach will start hurting and I'm still eating. Hey, how are you? I'm fine, how are you? I'm doing pretty good myself. That's good. I opened these, so let me get those to you. Wow, and she couldn't even wait until she was out of the store to start digging into the chips. What a sight to see. You ready for breakfast? Yes, ma'am. Octavia says she doesn't have the energy to leave her bed anymore, but she could still get a balanced breakfast. Eating is my happiness. It makes me feel safe. And if I could, I just wouldn't stop. Hold up, that is not breakfast. That is an absurd amount of nachos under any circumstance, but this is what Octavia eats right after waking up and getting dressed. After I finish my meal, I'm already thinking about eating again and what I'm gonna have next. And I can't wait. I'm done. She finishes up her well-balanced breakfast, but what will come next? Let's see. Here, those are for you. Yay! <laughs> I knew you were gonna be happy. <laughs> I love seeing the looks on their faces when I give them something good to eat. Well, sharing is caring, so good for Octavia for handing those out. 
On the other hand though, you really shouldn't have an entire plastic bag worth of snacks within arm's reach. So what are we gonna have for lunch? A Southwest salad sounds amazing. I want some barbecue. Don't you want some? I would rather have a salad, you know. I want the barbecue place, so that's what I'm gonna get. I respect the effort there, but it sounds like barbecue is going to win out. I got your barbecue. Thank you. This isn't a life. Yep, here comes the barbecue. Let's see what we got. I'm existing. I'm not able to experience the things that I want to do, places I want to go. I feel like I'm in jail. Okay, I admit it, that looks better than a Southwest salad, but that is a whole lot of ribs and fries. We don't see her actively eat it, but we also see two closed bags on Octavia's table. So if she had even more after the ribs, that's a serious problem. I need for you to come help me in the kitchen. I'm in constant pain. My weight has worn down the cartilage in my knees. So when I walk, it's literally bone on bone. Despite the constant pain of carrying over 600 pounds, Tara is still able to help her mother out in the kitchen. Let's see what they're making. I'm tired of my back hurting because my stomach hangs so far down. I'm just tired. You want it creamy? Yes. You're a professional. You're my potato salad girl. Hold on a minute, is that potato salad? We see her roll over with a giant, giant case of butter and I think all of it went into it. That's the only explanation for why it looks that yellow. It's definitely hard to make potato salad that unhealthy, but Tara somehow found a way. After I eat, I feel disgusted, angry at myself. I'm helping her to stay like she is. It's hard to serve her and tell her. That's all you can have. The potato salad is done, but that's just the sides. And based on the contents of her plate, we also see Tara going through chicken, rice, and a roll. Now it's hard to be positive, but I think Tara even had seconds. The contents of her plate changed dramatically between cuts, so either the editors spliced footage together in a very strange way, or Tara had more than one helping. Now I have two kids who need me to take care of them. Oh, what you want for snack? What outfit you want to wear? And I have to be there to take care of them. Everything we've seen up until now has just been lunch and Tara breaks out the snacks once her kids get home. Now I know she doesn't eat any here, but the fact that she has a drawer filled to the brim with snacks heavily implies that she eats whatever junk she wants throughout the day. I can't leave my children the way my daddy left me. I want us to do more things as a family. She tries to do as much as she can, but but she can do more. Okay, so now we see Tara eating what appears to be a pretty normal meal. However, what makes it strange is that the kids aren't eating at all. I don't think this is dinner. I think it's just a very, very big midday snack. It takes a while to get clothes on me, but when I'm ready, the first treat for me is the ice cream, man. They come by every day, and I like to be outside for them, so I don't miss them. Cedric certainly has an interesting diet choice. I know I sure wouldn't be eating ice cream at 10 a.m., but the idea of it seems to be what gets him out of bed in the morning. Deidre loves the ice cream. Deidre hear this music coming around the block. Deidre gets up. He has an account with the ice cream man. Where do the ice cream man open up an account for somebody to get something off the truck every day? I'm with Cedric's mom on this one. I've never heard of anyone getting an account with the ice cream truck. Hey, what can I get for you today? Please, what's going on? All right, let me get three sodas, two bags of hot funyuns, a nutty butter, a strawberry shortcake, right. an ice cream sandwich, two fudge round pies, and oh, uh, another nutty butter, a plain nutty butter. Okay. All right, I could see now why he has an account. Frankly, that's just good business for the ice cream guy. That is an absolutely insane order. If I knew someone ordering that much that frequently, I'd make sure to stay on his good side. So that's how I start my breakfast, with the ice cream. But the ice cream and the snacks are just the start. It's good, but I get hungrier as I eat it. So what I like to get for my first meal is pizza, usually. And there he goes, eating it all, and apparently this only starts up his appetite for the day. After ice cream for breakfast, it's pizza for lunch, and Thedrick wasn't kidding. Apparently all that snacking only made him hungrier. I mean, just look at all that food. Four separate boxes, all just for him. I usually end up eating it all at once. So I can eat two full pieces with two orders of wings and the order of cheesy bread. But after I finish, you know I'm still hungry. I understand a waste not want not, but this is going way too far. Finding a way to down two very, very loaded pizzas, two orders of wings, and the cheesy bread in one sitting after a good chunk of that morning ice cream. Damn, I pray for his septic system. So I get the energy, take it to the couch, and then I just eat and spend my time there. Thanks to his addiction to food, Michael's day essentially begins and ends on the family couch. Can I made a book out of it for you? No, this is good. So most of my day 
suspend eating, and I love eating, but I hate how it's literally killing me. Food has basically destroyed my life already, even though I know what it's doing to me. We could see scrambled eggs, toast, bacon, and a muffin, but at least there's fruit in a bowl. What really makes this stand out is seeing his wife's plate when she sits next to him. If that doesn't show you Michael is eating too much, simply nothing will. So I spent the next couple of years going back to food again until I got up to 450 pounds. Michael is helping to make dinner, and if you like carbs, you'll like what they're making. Pizza, garlic bread, spaghetti, exactly one of the food groups is present in this meal. My belly feels swollen to the point that the scars on my stomach hurt from the pressure. I still don't wanna stop because of how food makes me feel. Michael loads up on four slices of pizza and a giant bowl of spaghetti that is overflowing at the top. And the worst part about that isn't what it's doing to my life. It's how it affects my family's life. He follows that up with, well, I'll be honest, I don't really know what it is, but I know it's not good for you. Dessert is mostly what I crave, and so my first choice is either cake or ice cream. Nothing makes me feel as good as sugar does, so it's the first thing I have every day. Tiffany starts her day with a treat most of us save for the end of the day. Ice cream or cake as a first meal? Oh, your poor dentist. Shopping for food is something that I absolutely love. Aside from eating, it's my favorite thing to do, and it fills me with such excitement when I find what I want. This trip to the supermarket gives us a pretty good look into Tiffany's life. While a lot of products are blurred out, we can take an educated guess as to what's there based on the shapes of the packages. While most of it looks like snacks, sauces, and other carb-heavy greens, we also see a giant tub of ice cream and a whole lot more in her cart. Hey, babe. Yeah. Can you bring me the cookies? I need those, please. Apparently, they bought cookies too. So I was thinking on the way home we could stop by and pick up some food. Is that okay? Yeah, if you're hungry. Okay, I guess the entire sleeve of Oreo cookies just wasn't enough. So now it's time for a quick bite before dropping off all the food you just bought. Can I get the double quarter pounder meal large? An order of 20 piece nuggets as well cookies as well. Okay, all right, 30, 63, have a window, please. Thank you. Boy, she wasn't kidding about the sweet tooth. Even more cookies? I mean, you're already getting nuggets and a large double cheeseburger meal. I know I eat way too much. The problem isn't understanding that. It's not being able to change that. Okay, I honestly thought the nuggets might have been for her boyfriend, but it looks like he's not eating anything. Tiffany's just going to town on a cheeseburger, nuggets, fries, and cookies like it's nothing. Do you want to start making breakfast? Sure. Okay, thank you. I hate that I let it all get to this point, but when it comes to food, it feels like I have no control. Gina's wife, Beth, makes her breakfast every single morning, and it doesn't take too long to see why she's the size that she is. When I wake up, I'm starving, and I can't wait to eat. Before she goes to work, Beth makes us all what we need for breakfast. Where do you even get a bagel that size? I, I mean, seriously, that's just not industry standard. Bagels are nothing but carbs, so if you're eating one of those every single day, you're gonna put on some weight. Eating, it makes me feel good, it makes me feel safe, it makes me feel happy. It takes away all my pain and depression, so no matter what it's costing me and how much I hate my life, I can't stop. I just want more and more and more. Of course, the bagel isn't all we get this morning. Beth also brings out a whole bunch of other food, and Gina doesn't shy away from any of it. We never get a close-up on the plate, but we can tell she's eating some type of egg sandwich on a separate bagel, a hash brown, and I believe there's also some kind of bacon on that second plate. So I have to have someone constantly bring me more food. Without it, I would have nothing in my day to even look forward to. Beth's gone now, but that doesn't mean Gina's done eating. No matter what I've gone through or how bad things got, I knew I could always rely on food to get me through it. That can't all be for one person, right? A single one of those subs would fill me up for the day and Gina's going through both of them like it's nothing, as well as an entire carton of fries. I'm almost certain that's marketed towards an entire family meal, but I could be wrong. Try not to wear myself out so much I can't get out this shower. It does take a lot out of me at that point. All I want to do is eat. Tommy's breakfast sounds normal enough on paper until you see it all laid out. So that's when my cravings for my first meal start to get overwhelming for me. Okay, it's just pancakes and they seem to be small enough. Simple, right? And Amanda is the one that cooks and brings it to me to make sure I'm happy. And she always makes something good. Very, very good. My favorite is when she makes me a bunch of bologna sandwiches. It's hard to stop. Well, that's a bit more than just pancakes. We've got all those pancakes on one plate, but we've also got two bologna sandwiches and scrambled eggs. Side note, who actually likes bologna sandwiches? I think that's the first on this show, and that's saying something. Food is what I live for. I'd eat every minute of the day if I could. They eat like eight meals a day. Wait a minute, he eats eight meals a day? Are they all that size? I was lonely, so I put up a page on a dating site when I was 31. 
It's not too long after that I met Amanda. I wasn't expecting to meet anybody, really. I was engaged before to someone who was also morbidly obese. He was over 700 pounds. It's just a wonderful, wonderful man. Well, that's not necessarily a meal, but eating ravioli right out of the can and then downing it with cake certainly is a decision one can make with their life. But I never felt like I've been able to be the boyfriend Amanda really deserves. The more my body breaks down, the harder I make it for her. And in case you're wondering if you only had one slice of cake, no, he didn't. It's a cross between my HK recipe and my Tetrazenia recipe. It's good. Enjoy. Time for meal number three of the day, and it looks to be about as healthy as the first two. I'm 38 now, and my life is pretty much this bad in eating. So I don't do anything or see anyone. I love Amanda with all my heart. Tommy's girlfriend says it's a mix of two recipes. We've got some pasta with sauce, looks like some meats in there too. Basically a whole bunch of stuff you shouldn't be eating at Tommy's weight. Me and my brother live in my van because we're homeless and my size makes my situation harder because of how I struggle now to fit places and do things. Dominic and his brother are truly down on their luck as they're currently homeless and living out of their van. Hey, can I get uh, six the, of the bacon, egg and cheese biscuits? Six hash browns? Two triple griddles? Hey, can I get three of the Big breakfasts and a large chocolate shake with whipped cream. Look, I get that you're in a bad situation and that food is an escape, but you honestly don't need that much, even if you are sharing with your brother, especially since money is tight and you should probably be saving every cent you can rather than getting a large chocolate shake with your third big breakfast. I want a family. I want a roof over my head, but not being able to control my eating has destroyed my life. The two brothers manage to save up enough money for a hotel room for the night, and in the morning, they get a familiar breakfast. I'm hoping me and my brother can figure out how we can get what we need to go to Houston so I can find a way to stop eating and lose weight. Yep, I'd recognize that plastic tray anywhere, and those obviously microwaved pancakes. That's a McDonald's big breakfast again. There's no way my body could take much more of being like this. I just really hope it's not going to be too late. Look, I know they're cheap and quick, but for the love of God, try to switch it up every now and then. And just like last time, he's having more than just one big breakfast. There's at least four there, so even if you split them evenly, he's still having more than one big breakfast before you even account for the drinks and extra hash browns. Once I'm dressed, food is what I need. It's what I want and it's what I have to have. Usually, Chris is the one who makes it for me. After getting showered and dressed, Carrie cannot wait to finally get some food in her system. Food is like a best friend. It's a comfort, it's a joy, it's almost euphoric. And when I'm eating, I don't hear anything else. I don't see anything else. Her husband, Chris, delivers breakfast right to Carrie's chair and just look at how much food there is. On the surface, it's just your typical breakfast foods, eggs, biscuits, and bacon. It's definitely not the type of meal you should eat every day, but it's nothing too bad to have on an occasion. However, what truly makes it stand out is the sheer quantity of the food. Just look at how high that's stacked. It's ridiculous that one person eats all that just for breakfast. I'm the receptionist at a doctor's office, and I'm only able to do that because I can sit most of the day. And when I get there, it's never too early for lunch. Despite her size, Carrie can still work and we get a glimpse of what her typical lunch looks like. Lunch motivates me a lot, but I'm getting to where soon I won't even be able to go to work. And yes, we will skip over the irony that she works at a doctor's office. I know my weight's out of control now and my body's getting to a breaking point. Okay, two boxes for one person, not really off to a great start. It is so hard for me to stop eating. If I did not have to keep a time clock, I would spend more time focused on food. We don't get a clear look at the actual food, but we can see that it's clearly not healthy. One of the boxes is loaded up with fries and what appears to be some type of wrap, a euro maybe, while the other one is what I'm guessing to be hash browns and sides.